my name is Cassandra Napoli, and I'm a strategist at WGSN Insight. And today I'm going to walk through some themes from our marketing and social media forecast for 2021. This presentation acts as an introductory guide to some of the key themes that we've been tracking from brand universes and sonic social media to mass live streaming and synthetic marketing. But before I get into the presentation, we've got a really unique opportunity for attendees today to download our future consumer 2023 full white paper, which is our hero piece of research that we produce annually. And so if you type this link into your browser, you'll be able to check it out on your spare time. So I definitely recommend that. Due to timing, we believe in for the coming year and beyond, and these are them. So first up, we've got mass live streaming. So accelerated by the pandemic, live streaming soared in popularity across the world and across category. From retail to entertainment, this channel is primed for huge growth throughout 2021 and beyond. The takeaway here is that live streaming is big business and it's something marketers cannot afford to ignore any longer. In China, live stream shopping has become a core tenet of commerce. In 2021, the live stream e-commerce market in China will reportedly value $305 billion, up 384% from 2019, according to research from KPMG and Alibaba's Ali Research. Live stream selling has quickly become established as the new standard for driving online sales in China, encompassing product education and entertainment, along with influencer engagement. During China's lockdown in 2020, in-time department stores owned by Alibaba enlisted over 5,000 of its sales associates to host live streams. Meanwhile, JD.com launched its first dedicated live stream hub in September 2020, aiming to train professional live stream talent and help traditional and local businesses with live stream e-commerce efforts. We've been tracking the rise of brands tapping into China's fan economy for endorsements and social commerce opportunities through live stream celebrity sessions. For the launch of its Fendi Pack collection in November, the fashion brand hosted its Fendi Roma party at, at a Shanghai mall and launched a live stream event on Weibo with various celebrities, ambassadors, and KOLs. The hashtag for the event, Fendi Roma party, reached 72.5 million views throughout the day-long initiative. Livestream is picking up in the West as well as more consumers become acclimated to sales on this medium. And some research from Coresight actually shows that the live stream market is going to soar to $25 billion by 2023. From a platform perspective, brands should look to Pinterest, which just now announced plans to host its first three-day live stream event with US brand Rebecca Minkoff, as well as Facebook, which has just launched Live Shopping Fridays, a two-month initiative which will include brands like Abercrombie & Fitch, Bobby Brown and Sephora engaging in weekly live shopping, sh shopping streams. There are a number of new upstarts specializing in live streaming. Network, a shopping app which enables fans to shop at the speed of culture via shoppable live streams is definitely one to keep an eye on. It recently hosted a shoppable basketball themed festival called Off Court in March, featuring exclusive drops and panel discussions at the intersection of sport, entertainment and fashion. Help within its app, the two-day shopping and entertainment experience offered live content which ran all day and got over 2 million users. Lots of brands globally began to invest in storytelling and event production via live streams across a variety of platforms over the last year. So with Milan Fashion Week unable to go on as normal, Gucci unveiled a 12-hour live stream available on YouTube, Twitter, Weibo, and Facebook called Epilogue, which granted viewers a behind-the-scenes look at the mechanics of shooting a fashion campaign which also, also doubled as its seasonal show. Sponsored live stream commerce allows influencers to connect with followers in a more personal setting where they can speak directly to them. Audiences who tune in likely favor and trust the influencer, making it all the more likely that they'll convert them. Brands like Walmart are tapping into these types of live stream experiences. The retailer just pioneered a new experience on TikTok, letting users shop without leaving the app. Back in December, it launched its Holiday Shop Along Spectacular, a one-hour live show starring different TikTok creators who highlighted items available at the retailer. According to Walmart, the event experienced seven times as many views as it had expected and boosted its TikTok following by a staggering 25%. The brand returned with another live stream shopping experience in March, this time with a beauty offering, proved it was successful the first go around. In September, Amazon Live also hosted its Beauty Hall Live event, which was an 11-hour stream with celebrities and influencers featuring 70 promotional deals. Now to draw your attention to the worlds of gaming, entertainment, and social media, which are increasingly blending, paving the way for multi-layered experiences. The internet is evolving into the metaverse, which is an always open shared virtual space with AR integration that will drive culture and design, enabling new modes of expression 
and experience. While some early adopting brands are already experimenting with this concept, it's likely that will, it will not reach mass until around 2023. Brands should begin preparing for the shift, though, by building or integrating into these digital realms that will have their own economy in the future. One way to kickstart this process is through strategic partnerships. In 2021, look to collaborate with companies or institutions that enable multi-layered digital experiences. In December, sustainable apparel brand Panjaya teamed with Anam XR and Fashion Innovation Agency to create a virtual free roaming experience in Antarctica. The project allowed users to discover and interact with Panjaya's innovative flower down winter jackets in a contextual setting. As COVID-19 forced physical events online, companies quickly embraced metaverse concepts. For instance, ComplexCon's annual event segued into a virtual iteration called Complex Land. Luxury fashion brands have reacted to the onset of the metaverse as well, experimenting with multi-layered and collaborative concepts. Gucci's collection with the North, with the North Face rather, integrated with Pokemon Go, while Balenciaga in December launched its Autumn Winter 21 collection with a new product-centric video game dubbed Afterworld, The Age of Tomorrow. Skincare brand SK2 braced for the impending metaverse with the launch of its first virtual city called SK2 City, inspired by Tokyo and the brand's heritage on its site. Visitors to this branded world were able to consume a six-part animated content series called VS while sat inside a virtual cinema, for example. Social gaming and entertainment platform Roblox, which just went public in March, has been around for more than a decade, but actually found huge success in the last year, especially amongst Gen Z and alpha consumers. Ultimately connecting with their future consumers, Gucci unveiled the Gucci Garden experience, which was a two-week virtual activation taking place inside the platform that mirrored its in-real-life activation. Now moving on to synthetic media, which we believe is the future of content creation, set to transform everything from the average selfie to memes to blockbuster films. This encompasses various types of manipulated media, like deep fakes to create artificially powered content. While synthetic media can contribute to a consumer climate of distrust and uncertainty, it also enables new creative possibilities and allows brands to expand their scope of storytelling. Synthetic media is no longer an unusual anomaly. It's become normalized in culture, transforming ad possibilities past, present, and future. Social media audiences are aware that things are not always what they seem online. And while synthetic media creates further doubt, the brands experimenting are not doing it from a place of trickery. They're tapping into humor and leaning on the tech to foster broader inclusivity, rewriting the rules of advertising and redefining the culture in the process. Brands are still at the very start of unlocking the creative potential, but new companies are helping brands to minimize risk and optimize strategic communication. Synthesia is an AI video generation platform that rose to prominence in 2019 after helping nonprofit Malaria No More run an ad with David Beckham, which you may have seen. He was essentially able to speak nine languages with help from the technology. So Synthesia allows brands to create more inclusive marketing that can reduce costs for reshoots and localization. For example, Synthesia tailored a Just Eat ad for the Australian market where it uses a different name without actually having to rebook the talent, which was Snoop Dogg in this case, or having to reshoot the ad, ultimately saving time, money, and resources. Synthesia also teamed with Frito-Lay to create a web-based app dubbed Messy Messages, which used deepfake technology to enable the football star Lionel Messi to interact with visitors. Messy Messages conversed in 10 languages, was available in 20 markets, and took six months to develop. Brands are also leveraging synthetic media to cast any stars in campaigns. Mountain Dew tapped the late painter Bob Ross and sponsored a lost episode of his iconic television program. Meanwhile, a Spanish brewery resurrected Spanish singer Lola Flores' voice and image to sell beer, which actually saw mixed reviews online. Some brands have also leveraged synthetic media to rewrite the past. In April 2020, State Farm actually launched a deep fake ad during ESPN and Netflix's sports documentary, The Last Dance. The spot actually featured a manipulated vintage clip from 1998 of Sports Center's Kenny Main, who is now in his 60s, making predictions about the year 2020 as a 38 year old man then. The ad was a lo fi deep fake. It was meant to look like a spoof and was created in good fun, but Altering the past and rewriting history with synthetic media could become dangerous territory if used maliciously. There's also Hulu, who tapped a roster of famous athletes to create a humorous lo-fi ad with obvious deepfakes, attaching athletes' faces onto body doubles. Brands are also experimenting with AI-powered synthetic celebrities. Look to Spotify and The Weeknd's microsite, which celebrated his fourth album by creating a personalized listening experience. Once users logged into their Spotify account, an AI-powered avatar of the star basically interacted with them based on their Spotify history and habits. 
Now, moving on to our next theme, no-nonsense marketing. In 2020, marketers had a difficult time striking the right chord, resulting in monotonous messages about unprecedented times, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Fast forward to 2021, and times are still uncertain, but messaging has actually matured. Marketing that gets straight to the point will resonate best now. So using clean copy and imagery, brands will increasingly focus on the product or brand benefits minus the fluff. Hulkin is a sustainable bag brand with the tagline, quote, schlepping made easy. Its Instagram and site simply communicate its many use cases, which make grocery and laundry day much easier. Then there's also sustainable fashion brand Maison Clio, who unveiled new receipts included with all new purchases. Each features a detailed list of the money and time it took to create each piece, incentivizing ethical consumers to continue shopping. This no-nonsense transparency will win big this year. We're also seeing the rise of welcoming all-inclusive brands. So a New York-based fashion label, which we really love, called Mirror Palais, showcased a model with her health monitor device fully visible through her bikini bottom. The post does not explicitly celebrate the gesture, it's just normalized, but the brand's community celebrates it in the comments section. The lesson here is that not all inclusive initiatives need to be explicit. Consumers will hunt them, down, hunt them out rather and celebrate them organically. We also want to call out ASOS, which tapped Natasha Gori, a model who is also deaf and wears a cochlear implant, to model earrings. Audiences across social media praise the brand for this type of representation. There's also an emerging movement that we're calling self-callout culture. Fashion brand Ghani, for example, launched a standalone Instagram account called Ghani Lab, where it invites its community of nearly 10,000 followers to follow along on its journey to becoming a sustainable brand or becoming as sustainable as possible. Now we want to draw your attention to the new era of influence. So influencer marketing was put to the test in March 2020 as brands cut their budgets. As the year trekked on, however, it recovered and the role of the influencer really shifted. Influencer partnerships must center on the creator's personal story for 2021. One of the most famous TikTokers I'm sure many of you will have heard of is a 16-year-old called Charlie D'Amelio who partnered with her lifelong favorite coffee brand called Dunkin' and launched a drink called The Charlie. In March, the brand also unveiled a limited edition merch line with the, with the coffee chain. McDonald's, meanwhile, unveiled a celebrity curated menu from rapper Travis Scott, which included a hamburger, fries, and a Sprite, which is Scott's go-to order. Restaurants ran out of the product, and the 30-second spot actually earned over 4 million views, while Scott earned $5 million for the deal, plus an additional $15 million for the merch he also launched. And many celebrities and influencers have followed suit, dabbling in various industries and projects simultaneously while building businesses or helping existing ones to grow as more than just the face of the brand. Addison Rae has become a bona fide celebrity in the last year. She released music, will debut her first film, He's All That, coming to Netflix in August. And she was also joins the, she also joins the growing list of celebrities who've launched beauty brands in the last year. So she launched a clean Gen Z friendly beauty line called Item Beauty in partnership with Made by Collective. Addison also runs a podcast with her mom, who, uh, which was actually just confirmed for, for a second season. Will Yachty is another great case study we'd like to call out. He recently teamed with General Mills' Reese's Puff cereal, which he has eaten since he was a kid, after first releasing an updated take on the jingle from the early 2000s. The partnership saw the rapper appear on the brand cereal box, which he described as the moment in his career that he is most proud of. In April, both Lil Yachty and the cereal brand also released a product called Lil, Lil Yacht to enhance the eating experience. The product featured a built-in bowl and waterproof speakers, perfect for summer. Similar to many other celebrities, Lil Yachty has also entered the beauty category, launching Crete, a new limited edition nail polish label, which arrives to market on May 21st. He's also launched his own digital currency, Yachty Coin, which fans can buy into in order to access special experiences that other fans won't be able to. And this is a big trend taking off in the influencer category at the moment, creating a lot of new community building and monetization opportunities. Influencers aren't just getting famous, they're getting rich and they're becoming venture capitalists. So Charlie D'Amelio, the 16 year old TikTok star who boasts about 115 million TikTok followers, recently invested in the teen banking app called Step, while fellow Gen Z creators Bryce Hall and Griffin Johnson invested in a cash advanced startup called Blendtable. There's also 19 year old TikTok star Josh Richards, who in 2020 was appointed as the new venture partner at Remus Capital. He also holds the impressive title of Chief Strategy Officer at Triller, which is a TikTok rival video app, where he is basically charged with helping the app appeal to young creators and also overseas monetization. 
And that's it for um, super influence. But moving on now to TikTok attainment. So TikTok continues to upend social patterns as users take their creative skills to new entertaining levels. Now, this is the new effort era, and TikTokers are prosumers part producer and part consumer. They're even spending approximately 50 minutes carefully crafting each TikTok post, according to Blake Shanley, VP of Global Business Solutions at TikTok. In the tech expert and former TechCrunch editor at large, John Con Josh Constein's newsletter, Constein points to creator Kurt Schneider, who recreated the Harry Potter theme song with the sounds of a washing machine, which the creator himself admitted to spending five hours on for a chance at virality. Let's take a look. As you can see on TikTok, the mundane goes viral and the unknown become famous. Each post is essentially a serendipitous lotto ticket to success, as users cannot anticipate if their content will win big. App limitations aren't holding creators back, with many proving that they have the ability to transform amateur content into major productions, both in and outside the app. In 2021, expect more users to share and co-create entertainment initiatives on the platform. Two TikTok creators called Abigail Barlow and Emily Bear, photographed here in this video, were so inspired by the Netflix show Bridgerton that they developed 15 musical theater style songs to coincide with the series with creative input from their audience that got a lot of praise from Hollywood. Let's take a look. This is what you call a honeymoon. Pacing around our separate rooms. Running from our elaborate rooms. We do. I'm out. <laughs> What started out as a creative passion project to pass the time during lockdown led these two young women to gain a lot of attention from important people, and they even signed with talent agency CAA in April. They're now possibly going on, going to go on to live out their dreams, and TikTok and the community on the platform really made that happen. Big brands are also diving into the app. So the first ever 100% in-app TikTok show was launched with Amazon France. There were 12 60 second episodes and everything associated with production took place within the app. So the casting was even done via an TikTok, an in-app TikTok challenge rather, that attracted about 45,000 people and earned reportedly 105 million views. Film producers Haley Adams and Michelle Melke actually produced Love Songs, which is another TikTok web series exclusive to the platform, which explored the dating lives of Gen Z. The series attracted 2.9 million views to the trailer once posted and 550,000 likes in the first two days after posting. The TikTok account now has close to 150,000 followers, and the second season, created in partnership with dating app Tinder, uh, will feature key Gen Z TikTok creators from the Australian market. Now, moving on to our last theme, which we'll dive into, called the uh, sonic social media. So Wired recently proclaimed that the, quote, future of social media is all talk as popular social platforms took off, creating a space for more dialogue driven and community centric conversation in social spaces. So when we say sonic social media, Clubhouse definitely comes to mind first and foremost, though it's far from the only sonic social media app on the market, but Clubhouse has enjoyed a lot of success over the last year. The app acts as a live audio chat room, replacing the traditional conference meeting or dinner conversation. And in April, the app announced it had secured a new round of Series C funding, placing its value at approximately $4 billion. Clubhouse offers a casual social experience in contrast to the sort of image overload and Zoom fatigue that we've all definitely endured over the last year. One Reddit user put it best in January, posing the question, could it be that Clubhouse's success is because we're all burned out from video calls and endlessly scrolling feeds of photos? Some companies are already anticipating Clubhouse to be big business and are hiring talent to manage their strategy on the app. So Ban Hall is a London-based communication agency, and they recently actually were looking for a senior Clubhouse executive to join their team. Clubhouse has also become a platform for recruitment, with rooms matching job seekers with employers. So in March, a global entertainment brand called Superplastic actually hosted a shoot your shot room, encouraging candidates interested in their vacant uh, chief marketing officer position to prepare a pitch to share live in front of hundreds of other people listening in. Early adopting brands have already started experimenting. So to promote its new Steakhouse premium bacon menu item, IHOP took to Clubhouse to offer listeners the soothing ASMR stylings of bacon sizzling on a grill for an entire day in an attempt to lure audiences into its restaurants. 
There's also UK-based fashion brand Ted Baker, who is among the first to experiment with the app and launch its own club. As part of programming, it debuted a six-part series with each room repurposed as a podcast episode. There's also pet food brand Pedigree, which launched a purposeful campaign on the app, working with 20 animal shelters to create 20 dog profiles to encourage pet adoption. Now, just to quickly wrap up here are some just quick takeaways from the session today. So first up is to develop live stream strategies that center education and entertainment. Innovative content driven live stream formats will cut through the clutter, but content must strike the right balance between attractive discounts, interactive entertainment and clarity of product information. Also brace for the maturing metaverse. The notion of brand activations will continue to evolve as the metaverse matures. Beyond brand recognition and entertainment, consider what your virtual brand activation has to offer consumers. Explore ways your brand's metaverse destination can benefit its community beyond content. Brand activations, even in the virtual space, need to be natural, not intrusive, and add value to the community. Start experimenting with synthetic media now. As synthetic media is still in it, it's still in its infancy, this is the time to experiment. Look to brands like Mountain Dew, mentioned earlier, or tap into organizations like Synthesia to create cost-effective ads that can be shared globally. And then finally, experiment with audio. So sonic platforms are primed to dominate the social landscape as they grow, and new brand opportunities will arise as a result. Clubhouse presents many new possibilities for brands to extend the scope of their existing marketing efforts. Brands should really consider experimenting with panel discussions featuring faces of the brand or offering behind the scenes insight into campaigns, shows, or design processes. Thank you so much for listening in today. And there's again, just uh, before we wrap up, that's the bit.ly link again, in case you're interested in checking out our future consumer hero piece of content. Thanks so much. Sandra, thank you so much. So interesting. So much to unpack in there. Uh, we just have a couple of minutes here, so I'm just going to pitch a couple of questions. Um, so you talk about synthetic uh, media and, and synthetic ideas. Do, are synthetic celebrities uh, something that are here now, soon, uh, the future? What, what, and what might that look like? Yeah, so synthetic media is very much at, you know, the beginning stages of what's possible. For a lot of brands are just starting to figure it out. I think synthetic media has gotten a really bad rap for various reasons um, because it can become quite dangerous. Um, but when brands use it from a place of um, humor or if they're just trying to expand the scope of their storytelling, you know, using Synthesia to expand how many languages they can convert the ad to, it becomes more inclusive. There's a lot of benefits to that. In terms of celebrities, um, you know, we've been tracking virtual celebrities for years now. I think little Michaela first emerged back in 2016 or 2017, and we've been tracking it since then. So that account, for those of you that aren't familiar, it's um, basically a, a virtual human um, modeled off of somebody. There's there's talk about whether she's modeled off of somebody um, that exists in real life, but basically she has her whole, her whole brand identity, um, has worked with various brands, has appeared on magazine covers. So you can argue that she was very much the sort of start um, or what sparked interest in it. I think the future of synthetic celebrities, though, very much lies in a AI and what's possible from a synthetic perspective. Um, AI avatars like um, the one that Spotify used with uh, The Weeknd, that really creates um, a very much, um, a very dynamic uh, relationship with the, with the end consumer. It allows them to feel more connected to that celebrity and more connected to the brand as a result. So lots of potential there, but we're very much at the start of what's possible. And how is it better than an actor, hiring an actor like the old days? Yeah, I mean, there's there's pros and cons to both. I think the interest in virtual celebrities, virtual influencers, there's tons of them. There's actually virtual modeling agencies. So you can go to, um, I'm blanking on what they're called right now, but um, there's various different ones. I think the Digitals Agency with Two Eyes is one of them. You can go there and actually work with, a, uh, you can select from, just like you would from a, a typical model board when you go to work with real humans, you can select different virtual um, celebrities and different virtual influencers to connect with um, for your brand. A lot of brands have started building their own virtual influencers. It really 
comes back to like control and brand control. Um, there's no scandal that is likely to erupt from them because they aren't real people. They're not going to say anything um, that could be deemed um, off brand or, or, or you know, um, sure. problematic in any way. So there's the, I think the control is one element that's a plus that I think a lot of brands see in it. OK. And speaking of brands are always trying to, of course, crack TikTok. You know, how do we how do we become relevant on TikTok? But what advice would you give in the 20 for 2022 brands to be thinking about TikTok? Yeah, I think TikTok is something I'm fascinated by. I think one of the greatest things about it is that it's basically a focus group in your fingertips. Um, you know, the it's endless content. It's based on what you want to see. So you can train the algorithm to, to, to send you content that you deem relevant and important. I think there's so many different sides of TikTok, as we've seen, a lot of different core aesthetics. Um, we've done a lot of work on that at WGSN, uncovering how Gen Z spends their time um, and what they kind of connect with each other in community building on the app really comes from a visual perspective. A lot of people, um, there's like a, a fandom out there um, attached to Regency Core, which stems from Bridgerton. So I think social listening is more important than ever. Um, that's what we kind of recommend from a brand perspective. I think one of the best examples actually stems from the Bridgerton example. Um, Bridgerton is a show on Netflix. It gained huge popularity like January and February. And as a result, um, I don't have the stats in front of me, but interest in 19th century garments, yeah. gloves, <laughs> puff sleeves, empire waistcuts, all those sorts of um, you know, design elements were really trending across different platforms. And so brands who can pick up on that interest um, on TikTok, especially can really leverage, you know, the items and assortment that they've got in their roster and, and create new marketing stories around cultural moments like that. Well, that community driven uh, thinking has certainly been a theme uh, all day today. A uh, final question about audio uh, clubhouse. Um, how is this different from podcasting? Is, you know, what, how, uh, wh how's it different from podcasting? Let's start there. Social audio yeah, media, I, well, audio media. I mean, yes. Yeah, I think what's interesting about the rise of sonic social apps is that it's not necessarily a new platform. It's one of the oldest mediums, probably for storytelling. What's interesting about interesting about Clubhouse is that it's ephemeral. Um, a lot of content is, is driven by you know you have to tune in right now immediacy, otherwise you miss out on that experience. Interestingly enough, um, brands have kind of gotten creative. Ted Baker, as I mentioned, I believe in the presentation, actually turned their uh, Clubhouse um, sessions into podcast episodes to repurpose the content content to reach more people. That's great. Um, it's been, there's been a lot of like cheeky moments as well. I hop again, tapping into ASMR with their sizzling bacon on a grill and streaming that on clubhouse for a couple of days. That's very much a multi-sensory experience. It makes you yearn for that bacon. Um, and so I think multi-sensory marketing is really going to take off quite a bit this year. Um, as people kind of, uh, are craving just to feel after such a year of compounded trauma and, and everything that everyone has gone through in the last year is being stuck at home. Okay. Well, great. Cassandra, thank you very much for your insights. Uh, very fascinating to watch. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.